though this is not the end of the story, but before telling how it ended, let me take you to the beginning first. This is how we met over Mercury Tone sample and preset packs. And then time passed, we talked about production, figured out we have a lot of common aspects when it comes to production. And then I invited them for an episode of For Produce One Sample. Okay, so starting off with our track. And then we decided to make a track together. I think I have something that we can work on. Awesome job on the track. I uh, I can't believe how good that synth is. So why don't you just go ahead and send over the rest of the project if you can, and we can take it from there. I'm super stoked. We'll talk soon. Bye. So I sent the initial light to the Fadem, and they improved the idea and arranged the tracks. We have the cool verses. And then we have this big, beautiful break. So a big leap. We were more or less happy with the overall structure of the track, but we needed something. And we kind of got stuck over here for a while. Days were passing and we were really discussing back and forth what to do. To be honest, I don't know exactly what to do. It doesn't have that moment yet. I'm struggling to find out whether or not it needs a vocal or if it needs just something else completely. It's just missing that little bit. So we're gonna try to figure out exactly what to do. Perhaps it's a vocal, perhaps it's a big synth line. I don't know. I'm excited to uh, go in and find out. At this point, I think it has passed like a three months. And finally, Daniel sends me this version. It looks complicated and messy, but the main idea was this very distorted sound. Extremely aggressive and it just fit right into the track. Was the idea that we were looking for. Hey, how's it going? It's going well. I'm pretty happy. Have you listened to the master version of the track? The final, final yeah. version. Everything is fine. Yeah, now. yeah, I know. I can't believe it. Like, um, <laughs> I probably listened to it about five times in a row. I think it's ready, honestly. Like, let's just send it. Like, let's just do it. We've gone back and forth, back and forth. I love the idea of the final drop. I think that everything is kind of put together now. Thank you for gluing it all together with your mastering chain, which you can check over here. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> which you can book on Mercurial Tones now. <laughs> yeah, you can Mercurial Tones over here. Yeah, I'm so excited. I think it sounds really different. Yeah. That's the reason I really love it. I think people are going to play it. I, I, I really think it's going to do some havoc on the dance floor. It's going to be great. And that drop part come, I think we kind of deliver it now. It's like, and this big lead and so on and so forth. It sounds super cool. So you're gonna send it off first? Should we do that? Yeah, I can call you once I get the final answer from him. Yeah, let's just do that. That sounds perfect. We'll chat to you. Okay. Talk to you soon. At this point in time, we were over the top. We were super sure that everything is sounding perfect and it will get accepted immediately. I decided to take the track and send it to one of the labels that I like. And this is what happened. I have some news that I want to share. Yeah, for sure, what's up? This is not the good news actually. So I sent it to demos to and he actually listened to it. But he okay. said interesting tracks, but you should find another label. So he didn't like them. So he didn't like the track. Oh, Unfortunately. Really? I was really hoping like positive feedback from him. That really sucks. And that was really a shift of emotions because we were so happy and sure and suddenly we were unsure and don't know what to do. We kind of felt lost at this point, I think. But we were really believing the track and we decided to do one more push, find that missing piece. People would love it when they hear the final result. You know, I was pretty confident and now it's like, nah, you send it to somewhere else. Well, maybe, maybe there's some more work to be done on it then. So maybe we try doing the vocal thing 
first and then either resending it to them or trying a different label and seeing if it maybe gives a little bit more story to the song you know not give up hope we're gonna keep going yeah so, exactly this is the first label anyways let's just squeeze the extra 10 or 20 percent out of it let's try the vocal idea let's see how it comes out never give up never surrender definitely not no you've been you've been very encouraging for some of our songs so i want to be encouraging for ours i'll hit you up when i get done with this travel arrangement stuff and then we'll figure out what we can do for the last bits yep that sounds good okay bye great bye bye Please send us your vocals. Every time I ask help to my community, always came really cool stuff out of it. So the thing that I mean by community is we ask in the previous video to the community if anybody wants to join our track and collab with us. And Alex Beautiful Aries was one of the content there. And here's this beautiful vocal just fits right into the track. Great. And this is how we make beats. Yeah, this is this is how you make everything. All right, do you remember the guy that actually had the Instagram video and had all the falsettos? And we said maybe it could work for our track. Beautiful errors was that one. Right? Yeah, exactly. That's the beautiful errors, Alex. What I did is actually give him the break and then we go to that big lead sound and then we go to the drop so that we have this kind of the core of the track together with the vocal okay we can see if he comes up with the idea that sounds great yeah, i like one of them quite a bit but i want to see if you like them as well nice i like this the part where he sings after the first break it really fits right. there right i really like the falsetto stuff that he does like in this type of track that we're making here i think that this really really works the thing that i'm curious about is is when he goes into the low octaves is is that going to clash with a lot of the frequencies that we're already using i think we, what we need to do is like just when he sings low we probably take off everything so the verses that he sent over is great we just need to have our track now fit his voice if that makes sense we got to figure out what we're going to do on the drop but when that happens Boom. The vocals were so strong and nice, we had to reprioritize the things. The first thing that we did, bring down the, all these arpeggios and pick these vocals to the front after the first break. So the vocals were carrying the verse, but the most important thing for me at least was the break, where the vocals leads into that big lead. And we did it by increasing the length of the break and adding the vocals at the front. Here comes the tide to feel it rises. Here comes the tide. Right into the lead. Will you hold on to? So he's telling the tide is coming, and then comes a big lead, making it sound like a big tide. It was just perfect. The, the most interesting thing for me is like the. I think he nailed the theme, right? The tide. Like the, old, yeah, like the vocal and all the lyrics. The world's about to explode or something. And he's just standing there and like singing, right? I, it's funny that I jump all, all like completely straight into the production aspect of like how he yeah. sings it. That's just kind of how I perceive things. In terms of the storytelling, I think it's great. I think that the tide is a perfect theme for uh, the actual story that we're trying to tell. I think we should definitely back. change the name to the tide now. Definitely, yeah. I, I also really like track names that um, are simple and short. And I think that this is just really, really cool. Even though it's taken a little bit of time, um, it's come together quite a bit. I'm super, super happy that the vocal is coming from the community. This is really great. This is the natural, organic way I think that musicians work best together. And at this stage, we were ready again to send the track back to the labels. I talked to a friend and um, he's working with another label called Odd One Out. Have you heard of them? Yeah, I love them actually. They have some really yeah. cool stuff. I sent them over the tracks I mean, and cool. they really, really like it. They're looking for a track that kind of fits this vibe that we have. I wanted to see what you thought. What do you think? 
I think it's a great opportunity. I would love to release with them. That solves a lot of issues. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know like the ins and outs of everything. I'll just start an email chain and then we'll see what uh, see what they come up with. I think it'd be a really nice fit, honestly. Like Yoda's label is like really forward thinking. So I'm glad that you're on board. I think our sound actually fits to all one out a bit more than the previous label as well. I think that this is kind of a blessing in disguise. Congrats. Great, congratulations to you too. How many more calls do I have to do with you? <laughs> I'm tired of you. <laughs> I'm not gonna do a track with you again. No, I'm so kidding. I've loved all of our talks. We got two days and we got our release. I'm glad that we went with Odd One Out. I think that was the right call and it hasn't even been released yet and it feels already like we're getting the response that we were hoping for. And then now the world gets to see it, so I'm super excited. Also fits perfect with the compilation altogether. I'm really happy that we kind of get rejected first. Without rejection, you, you don't have a litmus test of you know where you're at in the market it doesn't really get challenged and it doesn't really get tests without somebody telling you that your stuff is is garbage and he didn't say that but sometimes you that feel that way where we're at in our journey as fatum we're switching from trance to more of a melodic techno organic trance type of sound you don't know how it's going to land with a new market <laughs> yeah, exactly yeah, i remember having that, that, that call sucks. with you in the car it was so like uh are we making melodic techno wrong are they going to accept us because of our history in trance like all those things go through your head and you got to learn how to just trust yourself and trust your judgment and now what do we have people playing it all yeah. over the moment we finish the track we both love it i think there's a really important like i'm going to use it in my set as well we both needed each other to keep encouraging each other that we were yeah. doing the right thing but you would think that oh man like it must be easy for you guys because hey you guys are established you've already done it yeah to a certain degree but in, to a certain degree you're always putting yourself out there you're yeah. always going to feel vulnerable and by feeling vulnerable and putting yourself out there and showing somebody that's bravery. Even though nobody loves it, you make it. And you made that track and it will resonate for eternity with you. And like you put it out, that is in itself is already really something that you should be proud of. Long story short, rejection's a part of life. It's gonna happen. But I can promise you one thing that for every door that closes, there can be another door that opens as long as you look for the door. If you just sit there in the darkness and don't do anything, then you'll never find the door. Encourage yourself and send it to another label if you're having problems. If not, comment below and then we'll uh, be able to help you.